good evening to everyone luckily i just uh, have power now so um, i hope now you can just uh, see me very well so uh, good evening to everyone especially to our invited speaker dr mudita senarat yapa uh, head of john keys research and the uh, vice president of john keys holdings private limited uh, so um, i think uh, today that um, most of you may be having the, this issue that power failure Uh, but you know that uh, uh, teaching how to face for the challenges is also one of our main targets uh, using this inspire webinar so uh, let's face to this challenge and uh, go forward so we may have different uh, that power failure and then interruptions but we'll forget it and then move forward and um, on behalf of the department uh, and the as the head of the department of chemistry university of peradeniya uh, i am pleased to welcome all of you in this uh, evening Uh, to the uh, 15th webinar of uh, inspire series conducted by our department uh, so uh, um okay so today's webinar is uh, also a special one for us uh, that is uh, because of a couple of reasons one of the reasons is the invited speaker is also a member from our department is a chemistry family member and the other reason is uh, he is the first invited speaker joining us from the industrial sector in sri lanka uh, to our inspire webinar series uh, so uh, therefore this will be a good opportunity to uh, most of the students uh, who want to learn uh, how to become a sri lankan scientist uh, in industrial sector uh, so uh, dr senarat yapa is not a guest for many of us um, i remember i met him for the first time in 2000 in the usa um, and uh, around 2010 in sri lanka i'm sure uh, most of you uh, know him very well and the other thing is that um, this will be the last inspire webinar for the year 2021 and uh, also this may be an unforgettable year uh, and also an un unforgettable year and event conducted in dark for most of us Uh, but uh, search in the light uh, in the life so uh, beginning from 2021 june 17 in this year we have introduced uh, many foreign speakers and also local scientists to our students uh, through this inspire webinar series uh, as you know the main uh, intention was to provide our students a chance to build up the connections and also uh, give them the chance to identify the future directions related to research innovation and industry so that was the main target of just uh, having this inspire series uh, i'm sure this lecture will also be very fruitful uh, one for most of our students so um, thank you very much dr sembat yapa uh, for accepting our invitation in spite of your busy schedule uh, i know you are also very happy to be with us even probably if you are in also dark and also virtually you are now with us today and uh, without taking much time i would like to invite professor anurag vikramasinghe her oh madam chandani i think uh, anurag vikramasinghe sir is here now uh, to introduce uh, professor dr senrat yapa to the audience uh, so um, i just now uh, think anurag sir is just here so i am also having some issues with the network so then that's why i just also Uh, having this kind of uh, interruptions so then uh, anur sir yes so okay i'm there yeah 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 so have a pleasant evening everyone thank you professor manav devi and thank you very much for the opportunity given to introduce the speaker today a uh, well known student that time when we were young and uh, dr mudita senratyapa uh, who is the speaker today he is the head of the john kills research division and he graduated with a first class honors special degree in chemistry from university of peradeniya in 1996 then he served as an assistant lecturer at peradeniya for a short period and then as a professional lecturer at kalaniya is that correct okay and uh, before leaving for graduate studies in usa he obtained his phd in analytical chemistry from university of arizona tucson usa in 2005 then he worked as a post doctoral research scientist and a staff assistant at the art 
Conservation Research Center of the Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, USA for five years before moving to Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka, he worked as a senior research scientist and business development manager at Slintech, Sri Lanka Institute of Nanotechnology for two years and then joined the John Keel Holdings in 2012. He has won several awards during his career. As an undergraduate student, he was awarded the Haytech Marketing Studentship for the best performance in chemistry during his third year and the Hay Color Studentship for best performance in chemistry during his final year. I think uh, we had those uh, studentships awarded by Haley's that time. He also won the gold medal awarded for the best university student in the All Island Inter University Chemistry Intelligence Competition conducted by the Royal Society of Chemistry Sri Lanka section. At Arizona, he won the University of Arizona Mid Career Fellowship in 1999. I think this was awarded to graduate student so that you don't work, you don't have to work as a teaching assistant, right? Uh, and yes. the most recent being the award being the John Keels Holdings Chairman's Award for Corporate Social Responsibility. As the head of the John Keels Research Division, Dr. Sendatyapa was instrumental in setting up a new unit for nanotechnology and biotechnology research and make a space for uh, electronics and fabrications. He's also responsible for generating new patentable ideas and creating research projects with partner laboratories hiring and managing skilled teams of researchers and facilitating research, patenting and publications. Under his leadership, John Keels has launched several research projects. And I think you have seen some of those notable projects on the screen, such as conversion of organic waste to hydrochar and plant-based plastics and food. I'm sure he will tell more about this research at John Keels during his presentation. Dr. Sentatyapa, over to you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, so uh, I didn't know much about uh, what I was going to be talking about uh, when I was invited to do this. Um, so I thought from the name, this is basically for students. So my whole presentation is basically um, geared towards students. I'm not going to talk about much of my research, uh, but if you have questions, uh, we have a question uh, session, I think after this, and oh, even in the middle, you can disturb me and ask questions and I can talk about those things. My presentation slides might not have a lot of information. Uh, so let me first share this. Okay, can everybody see my? Yes, we can see, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, like I said, uh, this is mainly going to be for students, uh, but um, if you, if uh, all the senior members feel like this is boring, I'm okay, them dropping out. Okay. Um, so, before we start, I want to thank everybody first, uh, before doing anything else. I want to thank uh, Dr. Melanie for inviting me. Mainly the conversation until today was through LinkedIn. And uh, sometimes I see the messages very late and responded, but uh, uh, the whole thing was organized through LinkedIn. And then Professor Manav Devi, uh, like she said, uh, I met her. Uh, when... You have that picture. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> on the day she <laughs> left uh, Detroit. Yeah, uh, at the apartment. Yes. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, so I went to see my friend who is yeah. right next to me in that photo and uh, he took me there. I didn't know uh, President Manav Devi at that time. That is uh, Neil took... Dias. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so I remember helping them pack also uh, on the last day uh, in uh -huh. US, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yes. next photo is when Proyas Anura was uh, making a joke in our chemistry party, I think. This is our second year. Uh, this is a old chem uh, a chemistry building there upstairs. Uh, we had the party there. 
And I think, uh, I can't remember what Professor Andrew was saying, but I remember him making a joke. And you can see uh, Professor Savitri uh, Kumar is smiling there and some of the other faculty members. And I also want to thank everybody who was part of uh, every academic and non-academic member of the chemistry department from 1992 to 96. I really owe them uh, an unpayable debt for direct me, directing me through this path. So this is, this is my path. Actually, I started my academic career at Veluana College, uh, Veluana Vidyali in Dematogoda. Then uh, uh, from grade six, I was at uh, Royal College. Uh, from there, I came to Peradini University. Uh, then to, actually, I'm skipping Kalani here because I, it wasn't really a academic. Uh, my, this is my academic path in a way. Uh, and the career path. Um, I think uh, Kalani University was a minor stop there because uh, uh, those days we were applying for uh, higher studies and uh, I think uh, I had to go find a job somewhere else and found a temporary job first and then they hired me as a probation lecturer. But uh, later on when I was doing the postdoc, I resigned from there and paid the uh, whatever I owed uh, to the university. Then I went to University of Arizona for my PhD and I'll show you this. Uh, then I did my postdoc in this small building there, which belongs, it looks small, but uh, it's a five story building, uh, which belongs to Carnegie Mellon University. And this was the best office I ever had in my life. It was right next to a river and overlooking the river. I, uh, we, but it was very cold outside most of the time. Pittsburgh is a very cold city. And this road uh, inside, I used to walk there even during the winter to get lunch in the, uh, from this building. On the way back, um, you feel like you are walking uh, in the middle of a valley because both sides, on the other side of the river and on this side, there are hills. So I used to think, uh, I was the only one on the road most of the time. And I used to think how small uh, human being compared to Earth or whatever uh, surrounding me. And I felt uh, so small uh, in that when I was walking. I remember thinking, I'm, I'm not even a dot in this whole uh, universe. So after that, I, uh, I was there for actually four years uh, uh, because uh, first two years was a postdoc. And then uh, I had another three-year contract uh, as an assistant scientist, but I uh, resigned after two years to come back to Sri Lanka. And I came and worked at Slintech for 23 months before I started uh, at the job at John Case Research. So I will go through uh, my story through some chapters. And I will, uh, I, this will look like a little bit scattered. But uh, I will try to bring all of those things home at the end. So bear with me. Uh, I will see, I will explain why I talk about these things in this manner and uh, you will see at the end uh, what I'm trying to tell you. So what I'm talking about Sri Lanka and good humans. Uh, so before I get there, have you ever thought of yourself why you are in science? Uh, whether you are a student or even a faculty member. Uh, this is a question I ask from anybody who uh, come to interview with me. I ask them, why did you select science after all? Uh, now, uh, if any of you come, you might come prepared, but I, I know how to catch you, don't worry. So uh, most of the time the answers are uh, really varied. Uh, but I remember for me, science, even when I was little, it was like a passion. I want to really uh, learn about science. I read everything which I uh, found those days when I was a student and uh, even a little student, uh, everything was about science. Um, so it was a, pa it is a passion uh, in my life. Uh, and I also think it's a responsibility, both individual and uh, social responsibility. Uh, I see in Sri Lankan uh, 
TV stations, sometimes people who read uh, something on Google and go and talk about like th they know everything. And sometimes they go and advise politicians and things like that. Uh, they, these, these things have led to massive problems even now in the country, if you really think about it. Uh, this is sometimes uh, when you really don't know what you're talking about and if you can't connect the whole picture, uh, you end up creating bigger messes than actually uh, creating solutions. So um, this is a path for me to explain what I experienced. Um, maybe I haven't figured out all these things when I was a student, but I think uh, with time, I slowly figured those things out. And I, if you get here as a Sri Lankan uh, free education, through Sri Lankan free education, I think you have an added responsibility to pay back that science to Sri Lanka. I'm not talking about the money. Yes, any anything which you learn, uh, even though it's called free education, somebody is going to pay for it. And whether you won't pay back or not, that's a different thing. But I think, especially scientists, uh, if you train yourself as a scientist, if you are a good scientist, you should definitely contribute somehow to the country. So as opposed to, for me, this is not a path to a job. I don't think I ever uh, worked like that when I was in the university also. I'll talk about it in a little bit later. And also self-centered development. That's, I think, uh, I'm not saying any of these things are bad, but that's not my motivation. So is there a case for science in Sri Lanka? So most of the time, if you have heard anybody talking about Sri Lanka, we talk about the 2,500 years of culture. Yes, it's a good thing, but we are here now. What are we going to do now? That question I have never heard anybody answering. And we talk about the strategic location. We talk about the natural beauty. Yes, uh, this is not the only country with a strategic location. This is not the only country with the natural beauty. Even though it's a very beautiful island, there are, uh, I think if you follow some of the Instagram accounts uh, on world travel, uh, sometimes uh, there are places you feel like you want to go. So anyway, uh, talking about science and innovation, how we can lift our country from wherever it is now. Uh, I would like to show you this book. This is, I'm gonna talk about this a lot. I don't know whether you can see it anyway. So it's uh, it's called Prosperity Paradox, uh, written by Clayton Christensen, who unfortunately passed away last year in January uh, in 2020. Um, in his book, he talked about uh, how foreign direct investment versus innovation leading to entrepreneurship. Uh, out of these two, uh, innovation leading to entrepreneurship or market creating innovation, he called them uh, as market creating innovations. Um, they are the only way to lift nations out of poverty. So I'll give you a homework. This is something you can do uh, by searching on Google. Compare South Africa versus Mexico from 1982 now. Uh, look at how much uh, for indirect investment they have received, how much each country has invested in innovation. I'll show you one graph. Uh, here is a comparison of for indirect investments as a percentage of GDP. Uh, Mexico is a country with uh, 128 million people. Korea has, uh, I think, 51 million people. But Korea has 1.5 trillion GDP, and Mexico have uh, has 1 million, uh, 1, 1 trillion GDP. So um, you can see, even though Mexico has received a larger portion uh, of FDI as a percentage of their GDP, they are still lagging behind uh, with, with uh, a country which has a, uh, less than half of their population. So I think uh, Korea is a good example uh, if you look back uh, from the 70s to now. So what are we missing uh, in, in Sri Lanka? We, I don't think we have entrepreneurship as a, a part of our education. Uh, I know a lot of people, uh, I, I will tell you, any, uh, tell you a story. I hired somebody from science faculty of Peradin University, actually a, a statistics uh, depart department of mathematics. 
and she was working uh, with me uh, for about one year. Her parents put her under enormous pressure to leave the private sector job and go to a uh, go to NSB uh, National Savings Bank. I almost begged her to not to do that, but I couldn't tell her to go against her parents. So I had to let her go. Uh, three months later, she was calling me crying, saying that Mudita, I think I made a mistake. Uh, so I actually somehow found a way to help her to come back to John Case, but not unfortunately not to my department, but she's in a better place. Uh, we have a data analysis uh, unit called Octave and she's uh, actually flourishing there. I'm actually happy to see her uh, working there and I, this is what she wanted to do. Uh, uh, I think this is one of the examples of many where our parents, uh, our culture doesn't understand uh, the entrepreneurial uh, training is needed because one of the things Sri Lanka needed is to create jobs rather than we need job creators, uh, not job seekers. So uh, the other thing is Sri Lanka has a lot of innovation. I, I have, you have seen a lot, uh, even from universities, uh, there is a you know, inventors commission, all these places, uh, schools have competitions. Sometimes uh, there are articles and uh, uh, news items on, to, on, on television and radio on innovators. Most of those are, uh, not the innovations we need for the country right now. So no, not all innovations are created equally. Uh, this is actually from this book. I think you should read that book. Uh, the, this is called Prosperity Paradox. Uh, so some of the innovations are sustaining innovations where existing products in the market get improved. And then companies, uh, most of the time, uh, try to do things with fewer resources. It's called efficiency innovation but we what we need is market creating uh, innovations i'll give some examples if possible but if you if you look at uh, what sri lanka has done for, like i uh, when i was introduced uh, uh, i think you guys got to know i graduated in 1996 so i just uh, went back and looked at what we have exported from sri lanka from 1996 so the export from Sri Lanka looked like this in 1996. Total uh, export uh, is about 4 billion rupees. And you can see agriculture, tea, then a uh, lot of textile, little bit of uh, uh, port activity, a little bit of IT, very little 4% uh, travel tourism and rest of it uh, also like that. So 10 years later in 2006, export number doubled, but you can still see the mix of exports still almost the same. Still 4% tourism, okay, we can blame the war, but uh, again, a lot of textile, a uh, little bit of tea related and other agricultural product and uh, port activity. By 2016, there's a huge portion of travel and tourism, and the rest still stayed the same, even though the uh, total exports double again. So every 10 years or so, total exports have doubled. Uh, now it is, uh, this was 2016, it was about $17 billion, but uh, we are in the mix of things. Do you see any high tech export here? This is the problem, right? We have, even though uh, in those 20 years, which I have shown here, this is after I graduated, about uh, 12 and a half years of this, I wasn't in the country, but my, my point is in this, this 20 years, things have not, uh, things, probably a lot of things have happened, but it has not uh, impacted the export basket. So we are also missing a scientific society. Uh, I think this fact came uh, really highlighted uh, during this pandemic, we were promoting, uh, Okay, I don't want to insult anybody, but I, we were promoting uh, uh, pseudo-scientific, uh, scientific, pseudo-scientific uh, uh, things. We were dropping uh, things in the rivers and all that. But uh, I mean, uh, 
we, I'm pretty sure each one of you uh, laugh, but uh, I don't think we did enough uh, collectively to show the country that this is uh, ridiculous and this is not the way to behave in a pandemic. Uh, I think uh, later on, I think uh, things got in the right track and now vaccination and all those things have come back to a good level. But uh, I think at the beginning, everybody was taking this as a joke, I think. And I, I want to ask these three questions, which I'm not going to go into details. I feel like we don't have good humans at certain places where things could change or that change could be impacted in the country. Uh, first question is, could someone who lost a job due to a grave violation of intellectual property at one place be part of an organization designed to create intellectual property for the country? Uh, could a person who is not a good team player uh, lead an organization? Could, uh, could people who look away when public money is being looted be allowed to use public money? So these are things you should start asking yourselves. So um, next chapter of this is going to be that I'm, I'm going to tell you that I can't inspire you. Let me explain why. I graduated in nine, when, the, when Sri Lanka won the Cricket World Cup. I can remember when, I was, uh, when we were writing final exams, uh, uh, I went to the library to study and came back at three o'clock had lunch and didn't move till the World Cup was uh, won. I was sitting on the first, first row of the Jayatilaka Hall to watch the whole match. I also didn't have an email address until 1997. When I was applying for universities um, uh, in 1996, I used to write a letter uh, in my handwriting and give it to Professor Namal. Professor Normal used to type it and send to different universities. Uh, and they send me uh, the applications uh, by mail. So I applied for graduate school using pen and paper applications. Most of my student life was spent during the third industrial revolution in a country barely getting through the second industrial revolution. To be honest, I don't know how to inspire you. Let me show you what your world is. So this is one minute in 2021 on the internet. Uh, there will be 5.7 million Google searches conducted in one minute, okay? 240,000 photos uh, users will share on Facebook. $283,000 customers spend in, on Amazon. So some of these Netflix, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all these things. Some of these things I haven't even heard. I don't know what Discord is. I don't know what Strava is, Venmo, all these things I don't even know. So this is one minute of 2021, the year we are finishing. Zoom is also here. Uh, 856 hours of meetings, webinars or whatever in one minute, so all over the world. And these companies did not exist when I was graduating. Uh, so Meta, as you know, uh, it's Facebook, WhatsApp, Messenger, it's Instagram. They have nearly 3 billion people on, uh, uh, attached to them. YouTube had, has 2.3 billion. I remember YouTube was, when YouTube was purchased by Google, it was, I think, early 2000, uh, and nobody knew what it was going to be. But now it has 2,000, uh, 2.3 billion people using it. Um, I think that is the second largest search engine. If you uh, you think that Google search is, yeah, Google search is the largest, but the second largest one is YouTube. So it's still Google. So every search, everything actually creates some money for uh, Google. Uh, actually, that's called Alphabet, the company is Alphabet. So none of these, like all this uh, Alphabet, Microsoft, Microsoft existed, but uh, uh, I don't think Quora, all the, none of these were available when I was graduating. Then on the other side, there is, uh, these are Eastern companies, WeChat, 
QQ, TikTok. I think there should be some uh, other the Telegram. I don't know what te where Telegram is, but these are not Western companies. So, so it's not just Western countries. These things are appearing uh, a lot in, um, um, and and this is this is your world. And I will show a small video. I hope this will play. So this is a video from uh, World Economic Forum. Uh, I think there is a YouTube channel as well as a website, this website. Uh, I think you, you should uh, go and look at it because uh, this has a lot of different type of technologies also. Most of the time I learn some new technologies through this website uh, because uh, this in fourth industrial revolution is in full force right now. And uh, Everybody is worried that this is going to create a divide between uh, people who have and have not, because uh, the prediction were from the data which was created from human origin to 2005 is going to be quadruple by from 2005 to 2025. So that much of data is going to be available. That much of info that information is going to create. Uh, uh, disruption in uh, many areas. Fourth industrial revolution is going to bring human systems and mechanical system interface together. So even though it's probably not chemistry right away, but chemistry is also needed. Nanotechnology is needed. If you are going to create a human or biological and mechanical system to interface, there's a lot of chemistry there. So uh, chemist for even for chemi chemistry students, this is going to be important. I think uh, there's a lot of biotechnology. Uh, there is a biotechnology revolution happening parallel to this. Artificial intelligence is coming in. So all these things are happening parallel to each other. And this is going to create a lot of disruption in the world. I think uh, this is something you should, uh, each one of you should uh, start following if you haven't already. So the other thing is climate change. Uh, I don't know whether my photo is obstructing here. Anyway, climate change is also a fact. So not all the good things are happening, bad things are also happening. We have to stop or slow this down before it gets to two degrees. And this is why in 2015, there was a Paris summit and we promised, uh, I think I, yeah. Paris summit, we promise, uh, uh, we also sign that, uh, sign the, uh, this uh, pact, but uh, I don't know whether we have done anything. This is the situation. This was the situation in 2014, 40% of our emissions, actually 48% of our CO2 emissions came from transport, 41% uh, 
came from electricity. I don't know whether you know, but for, for my knowledge, I don't think we have done anything to change our transportation systems or uh, electricity generation. Uh, I, I think these numbers now probably change for the worst side uh, now. So the other thing, uh, there are uh, uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals set for 2030. So these 17 goals were set, uh, even though uh, I feel like we are going backwards, for example, zero hunger, no poverty, these things are in the wrong direction at the moment. I think things we need to make sure that uh, things get uh, towards the right direction very quickly. Uh, number five is gender equality. Uh, I don't think that is there in, uh, in the country. I, I know one of the things I'm proud to be part of John Case is that they are actually doing a lot of things to bring uh, women managers to the front. Um, so this is a new trend in the world. I think uh, we have set a target to get uh, uh, women managers to the 40 to 40% 40 level by 2025. So um, gender equality is one of the biggest things we promote at John Keys. Um, again, Sri Lanka, uh, this is the situation of Sri Lanka. We have an aging population. We are going to be the oldest uh, nation in South Asia by 2030. And uh, somewhere around uh, before 2025, somewhere around there, uh, the, depend, uh, the, the, the people who are older than 60 years is going to surpass uh, so this dependency ratio here, uh, it's going to go up more than 100% here, right? So a lot more dependence uh, going to be there. Uh, so your world is going to, you have to take care of a lot of people, the kids, as well as the elderly people. So this is uh, what is happening in Sri Lanka. The other thing is corruption, uh, which you probably have heard of this. Uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is uh, it is also part of this book, uh, yes, I will come to that in a minute. Uh, so corruption, bribes are only one form of corruption, which uh, many people talk about, but our country's uh, perception, corruption perception index is going in the wrong direction since 2012. It has gone down. Uh, the score has changed minus two. And these are the countries we are uh, right now associating with Ethiopia, Tanzania, Serbia, Suriname, Colombia, and all of that. But um, this uh, book talk about why corruption happens. It actually, this is a scientific way of looking at, if you understand why something is happening, then you can come up with a solution. But basically, uh, the book says that until you understand why people hire corruption, uh, it'll be hard to fire corruption. So um, three, three things they say, vast majority of individuals in society want to make progress. So they want to get something happen. They want to uh, build a house. Uh, so something get to get approved, you get, go and pay somebody, get it done. Even though well, that's not the right way to do it. Um, something like, similarly, every company, every individual has a cost structure. So they have certain number of uh, amount of money coming in, certain um, amount of money coming out, going out. So they um, want to make things happen with whatever the money they have. Uh, and there are uh, people who really want to subvert the prevailing law enforcement strategies. Uh, these are the three, uh, just to benefit themselves. These are the three things, uh, three reasons why people mostly hire corruption. For example, one of the examples given in this book is how music piracy, a guy who was like pioneering piracy, uh, finally stopped because uh, pirating music uh, became more costly than subscribing to Spotify. So when you have innovation which actually create market creating innovation like Spotify, this actually stopped corruption in that example. Um, so all of you are trying to graduate to a world that doesn't exist. For example, I am a living example of that. 
the job I am doing did not exist in 1996. And I never even uh, imagined that I will have a chance of doing a job like this. Um, so I will strongly suggest you to uh, go to YouTube and search this name, Bo Lotto. He is a neuroscientist. Uh, uh, he talks about what, uh, if you want to be creative, what do you have to do? So basically, uh, he's looking at th things uh, from a neuroscientific point of view. He says that all the behaviors we have, uh, we do that for reduce or avoid uncertainty. For, for example, when we walk, we don't we know that the floor is not going to, uh, the ground is not going to fall apart. So those kind of assumptions are made because of uh, our experiences and we make assumptions through experiences and we stay within that safety zone. But if you want to be creative, you have to walk away from that certainty. You need to see differently. You need to begin with the question, why or what if. So this is the kind of, this is, he has a lot of uh, speeches on YouTube. I'm not going to go through in a lot of details, but uh, uh, this making assumption is assumptions is needed for survival. For example, if you don't know whether there is a predator in the corner, you're going to be dead. So you need to take whatever the information and make the decision quickly and create an assumption. So this is why the if if you feel like uh, there is some danger around the corner, you will avoid it and you will avoid it every time because that assumption is that you are going to get in trouble. But if you want to find out, you have to actually go through uh, the corner and see. So uh, this, remember, please remember this name and uh, search it on YouTube. So, okay. So I, I talk about uh, a lot of uh, other things. Let me quickly come back to things I learned. Uh, so this, what thinking like a molecule means. So my research director, his name is, uh, Scott Svedra. Um, he, uh, after I selected him, I had a meeting with him every Monday at 10 o'clock. In the meet, in these meetings, we talk about science mostly, 90% of the time, but we talk about other things as well. Um, once I yelled at him uh, and he was really upset, uh, but uh, next day I felt like, okay, I'm done. I am done with my PhD. So I came early in the morning and I, I tried to apologize to him. He said, no, why are you apologizing? Everything you said was right. So he was that kind of a guy. Uh, and we were actually good friends by the time I left. So he, I will tell you these three things he told me. He told me, Muzita biochemists look at things as one blob reacting with another blob. You are not a biochemist. Look at it as a, like a, at molecules, like, um, look at molecules reacting with molecules. And he also told me to be myself. Uh, that was a little bit of a long story. I will skip that for the moment. And also uh, he told me, if you want to be a good chemist, start thinking like a molecule. So basically what uh, it meant is uh, you need to know your thermodynamics, your kinetics, stereochemistry, everything you need to work in your head when you're looking at some chemistry problem. So if you're looking, if you're thinking about a reaction, uh, think like a molecule, think like that molecule which undergoes that reaction. So you need to know a lot of details. It's not an easy thing to do, but uh, it took me a while to think like that. I think at some point I figured it out. So actually when I, I found myself when I was doing my postdoc at Carnegie Mellon University, uh, my research director uh, is, uh, was uh, Paul Whitmore, uh, and I went and worked in an art conservation research center. One of the reasons I wanted to go there was because Sri Lanka was full of art objects, but uh, how many uh, chemists actually get involved in uh, conservation or any of these things, uh, all those things are done uh, by archaeology departments in Sri Lanka. I know they probably have some of the chemists collaborating with them or uh, they probably have some chemical training. But when you when a chemist look at things, 
uh, it might uh, it might be different. My research director has built a um, small gadget to predict how fast uh, color fade in paintings. That's why he ended up uh, heading this place uh, because uh, that actually became a hit in the in 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 U.S. art conservation circles, and he was a, he was. Uh, uh, call to all the museums to uh, look at their paintings and predict things and and it uh, it is a very simple thing thing but uh, this is where the science actually met with uh, uh, art that and work at that interface and uh, create something different so i finally learned to think like a molecule when i was there because we were a bunch of chemists there actually there were four or five phds and there were moments in the group meetings, I and uh, Dr. Whitmore uh, discussing things and everybody was like, uh, just listening to us. Um, so after one of those meetings, I realized I am actually thinking like a molecule. That's why I understand some of the things presented in group meetings uh, and some people don't contribute. And I also uh, I figured out that I want to help everybody. So this is me uh, I'm, and also I found out I'm brutally honest when I speak and I say what I have to say without really thinking and sometimes I get in trouble. Um, I take instruction literally and hold you to those. Uh, because of this actually I changed my group uh, Art Conservation Research Center group because uh, Carnegie Mellon website said if you want to uh, collaborate just walk in and talk to people. So I started doing that because some of the equipment I needed to use, I was actually building a sensor to detect um, uh, peroxide emissions from uh, degrading art objects. So some of the equipment I needed to use were not there in, in that department. So I had to walk to different uh, uh, scientific uh, units and asked their help and I actually created a lot of collaboration between that group and um, the Carnegie Mellon University, other groups. And I also actually went to, sometimes went to Pittsburgh University, also. it's a different university. I still went and uh, had a chat with them and uh, made things happen. So uh, something I already learned is wherever I go, I make it myself, my place. For example, when, when I was uh, taking the award, from uh, past chairman of John Keyes, he said, Mujit, you are everywhere. I said, yes, sir, that's, that's me. Because I went to John Keyes and I actually started volunteering because earlier in the in my, um, when I was starting John Keyes research, there was not a lot of things to do. I had a lot of free time. So I actually went and did a lot of volunteering and ended up winning an award. I never even in my dreams, uh, thought of winning any award, but I was actually, I was telling them I don't deserve this also, but they were saying, no, no, you deserve it. Right. So, um, and I actually have some ability to change institutes. I have done that uh, several times, which I'm not going to talk about here. Okay, I also did something. I actually started expanding my knowledge into other fields like economics, philosophy, started reading poems, which I hated when I was doing English classes. Uh, and you probably have noticed the title of this uh, talk is uh, apart from Rudyard Kipling's If, and there are some other parts where I have put uh, different uh, parts from poems because I find themselves uh, really uh, very beautifully written if, if you can imagine those situations. So I also, YouTube, as I told you, was start, uh, starting to grow when I was doing my postdoc and the second stint at Carnegie Mellon. Uh, I started listening to TED Talks, blogs were flourishing and read a lot. I actually wrote a blog also those days and started uh, reading a lot of books, different types of books. And I went, to, went and borrowed audio CDs from uh, public libraries and listened to those things alone when I was uh, going on long drives. And now I actually listen to a lot of things on this Audible app, uh, which is uh, available. Uh, it, it, you can buy um, books from Amazon and listen uh, 
on that. And this actually gives me time to sometimes uh, think when, I mean, in Sri Lanka, the drives are not that long, but in US, uh, sometimes I had to drive a few hours and there was nothing else to do other than listening to music. I learned something during those drives. And after coming back, I think I took a road which is not taken. This is another Robert, Robert Frost poem. I think that's also a beautiful poem. I think you should look at it, read it. So uh, I returned on the 31st of December 2010, started working 3rd January 2011. I went as a senior scientist, but uh, so the first thing in the morning was there was a Kiribati party and a CEO talk, uh, Professor Varanja said, everybody should be ready to do anything this year. In about 10 minutes, CEO called me and said, he's going to put me on business development. Actually, that kind of ended my scientist career there. I really, I'm really good at science, but I am really still miss doing a lot of things because my even current job is a lot of management and in a way, a lot of things which I, uh, which doesn't make me happy to do, but I have to do. Uh, but I told my, I was a little bit arrogant those days, uh, right after US, I had the green card and everything. So I said, if I, I'm not happy, I'm going to turn around and go back to US in six months. But uh, it, these are the things I heard when I was, I, I work like I was in US. Somebody came and told me, well, you're not in US anymore. You should work like when you're in Sri Lanka. So I told him, basically, he was telling me to slow down. I told him, you know, my desk, I showed him my desk and said, this is US. As long as I'm going to sit behind this, I'm going to work like when I'm in US. Because I came back to Sri Lanka to contribute something. I didn't want to be another guy who is in, in Sri Lanka. And he, somebody told me that, Machang, why do you tell people to call you Mudita? Tell them to call you Dr. Mudita. I said, Mudita is my name. So what's wrong with it? And some people said, you know, those days I was, we, you, he was referring to me and my friends, smart, but now we all have PhDs. And, you know, sometimes I felt like why these people are working in a place like this. And a lot of people kept on saying, I am the expert of this project uh, and things like that, which I don't, didn't like. And I don't think I am an expert of anything. I know a little bit of chemistry and I always uh, stuck to things I knew. What I learned from Slintec is that uh, first I learned how not to do business development because I felt like people are not listening to businesses. Um, people were trying to tell the businesses what to do, but businesses didn't want to listen to that. They had other issues. So really with time, I really started listening to them and actually uh, I was able to make things start, like I brought in some businesses which um, to Slain Tech as a business development manager, uh, my job is to bring different businesses to come and work with Slain Tech, which I was able to achieve uh, because I started listening. And I also realized many experts happy and ruin things, uh, which I'm going to talk about it if you want to really know, I will tell the details. And also I learned this, what is in that book, corruption is beyond bribes. I learn if they are sometimes. Uh, and also some leaders tolerate wrong things because I don't know why, why they do that. I, sometimes I know they see wrong things and they tolerated those things when I was at Slintec. So I don't think I was really happy when I was leaving Slintec. Um, but I, I, I actually went to a happier place. So this is what I achieved. The best one I achieved at Slintec is to take titanium dioxide, ilmenite or titanium dioxide project out of the lab to a pilot plant. Uh, making this happen took me, took a lot of my time. I used to talk, start talking to the person at uh, LAF's side, uh, like when I, when I was getting into the car to drive home, sometimes I go home, sit on my, on my bed and still talk to him. For hours, I used to talk, use my phone uh, and talk to him uh, and finally made it happen. So before signing the agreement, um, 
chief innovation officer, uh, then it was Professor Gihan. He asked me to increase the yield of the uh, 36, it was 36% to 60% in a month. So I haven't done this uh, science. This was not my area, but I read for three weeks in a row. I only slept about two and a half, uh, half hours a day uh, and finally figured out how to do it and hired a scientist and I actually pushed it beyond 80%. Uh, and the management, uh, I, I brought the two management into last boardroom to shake hands. Until then, they didn't know what was going on. I have I had every little dot uh, dotted and uh, I dotted and T's crossed by the time they uh, reached the boardroom. Uh, unfortunately for the TI2 plant, I left Slintec after six plus months after signing to start JKR. One of the reasons is also um, it was becoming unpleasant to work with one of the person who was there at Slintec. I really didn't want to. Actually, by the time I left, even though I worked that hard, CEO had to reprimand me for something also. That day, I hand him, handed him the resignation to go to um, JKH. Um, so I think the public of Sri Lanka should ask why there is no TI to plant in Sri Lanka yet from Slintec. Uh, for JKR, I think I used everything I learned from grade one to up to this point to build this place. It wasn't easy. But from JKH, I learned how to be a good leader. Uh, I actually received a training from the National University of Singapore. Um, uh, not only me, there were like 30, 30 of us in that training. And it actually made a really good uh, impact on almost everybody who attended that uh, workshop. It was a six month long workshop and we had to do a project for another industry in, within John Case also. And uh, John Case Holdings is a very process oriented company. And I also learned how to build processes for JKR. Um, and also I learned to follow, like I told you, if, if you give me instructions, I try to follow them to the letter. So the JKH values are caring, integrity, trust, innovation, and excellence. And I think uh, JKR uh, is an embodiment of that. Um, I also asked JKH not to force me to hire people, and they respected that. Uh, I, nobody sent me a CV to tell and told me to hire this person because I didn't want to take that kind of risk and go uh, start a mess here. Uh, so we grew from an office, just an office, to a lab, to a larger lab by now. Uh, if you visit to uh, Nano Park in Homaga, please do stop by. Um, we have a nice office and a nice lab now. They're still, we just moved in November and there will be some uh, photos will, which will appear probably in a month or so. We are working on our website also. These things will start to come up soon. What processes took me time to develop? I it took me a lot of time to develop how to get a diverse set of people. I have engineers, I have scientists, I have material scientists, I have chemists, I have I once had a physicist and also um, uh, software engineer was also there for a while, electronic engineers. So uh, these are diverse set of people and they are training, uh, some are from Peradini, some are from Morotu, some are from Columbia University, some overseas training. So all these different type of people, I figured it took me a while to figure out how to bring them uh, and work together as a one unit. So I uh, realized setting a common goal and empowering them on different tasks uh, actually uh, made that happen. Uh, also, how to generate commercially viable innovative ideas as a group. So we have this um, something called pitch day. Uh, it's like a randomly selected four people in a team, uh, then uh, four teams basically present ideas I select a winner and give them a cake. So basically it's a game, but we, there are a lot of really good ideas has come out of it because they, they, those ideas has to be commercially viable as well as innovative and they do a really good job. And how to keep a team in uncertain times. This is something I'm struggling with. A lot of people are trying to apply for 
higher studies. Some people are trying to look for jobs overseas. I, I think uh, current times has to change very quickly. Otherwise, I will lose part of my team soon. Is this a cake work? No, it's, it wasn't. I and my team work really hard and we also have fun. Um, I tell my team to make JKR their happy place. Whatever the problems they have, they can leave them outside the door, come in, be happy inside, go. This is actually has increased the um, um, productivity of the team. They, uh, I've never seen anybody sad inside because we, uh, if, we, if that happened, we noticed and that doesn't ha happen. Also, um, I have three rules. I tell them to work, uh, like work, uh, to produce work, which is about 45 hours worth work in a week. Uh, also, if, if they have to go out for, go to a hospital, uh, I don't know, bank or whatever they can go, but tell somebody and not to waste other people's time, which means like if they make an appointment, they should be there even if the other person is not. And finally, I want to, I want you all of you, to, uh, this is mainly for students, read, listen, watch, gather knowledge, try to be a T-shaped person. T-shaped means that you know a uh, lot of things and you also need to know a few things deeper. So be a T-shaped person. Try to be yourself. Hold yourself to high morals. Uh, follow your dream, but figure out what you want to do because uh, it sometimes everything becomes look like fun. But you need to know what you can do as well as you want what you want to do. Don't live someone else's dream. If you stop thinking about yourself, giving yourself priority, no one will. Walk orthogonally, challenge the status quo. If you want to change things in the country, uh, it's easy to give up and go and live a good life somewhere else. But if you really want to change the country, you have to challenge the status quo. Walk away from safety, challenge yourself, be creative and try to create jobs. Only you can tell what the future holds for you. So thank you very much. Uh, this is a picture uh, in our lab, one of the walls. Uh, this is this was created by my team. This they say this is our DNA in a way. So you can see how we work. All right, thank you very much. That was a very uh, motivational and exciting talk, Dr. Mudita. Thank you very much for sharing your knowledge and uh, life experience with us. It was very informative and kind of made a big message. So even though you said that you can't inspire and you don't know how to inspire people, you really did. Um, so with that, uh, we can move on to the question and answer session. So the audience, if you have any questions uh, or any comments uh, regarding today's inspire session, uh, I request you to unmute yourselves and uh, direct them to Dr. Mudita. Please do ask questions. I, I like people ask who ask questions. Yes, so Mudita. Is, yeah, go, go ahead. Sorry. Yes, uh, yes, uh, yes. Oh. Oh, thank okay. you so much. You have questions team. from me, you know. <laughs> So, yes, so uh, Barun also and here. I, Bala and I were batchmates, I think. If you Barun also here. Doctor, yeah, yeah, Barun. I saw it. Yes, thank you very much. Very interesting speech. Uh, thank you once again. And uh, thank you. Okay, it is so now open for discussion. Then we'll give a chance to others. Yeah, if you, uh, I mean, uh, I know I didn't talk about science much because I thought this was mainly for how. Uh, I mean, I uh, one thing I want to say is like I. I didn't know that I was going to do this when I was graduating. I had no chance. I don't think I, those days, if somebody said, I'm going to be doing this, 
at this age or at this time? I have no idea. I remember Professor uh, Namal was telling me not to go to private sector. <laughs> so I didn't listen. Really? Professor Namal is not here these days. He's in Colombo. He told me that he will not talk to me if I go to private sector. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> So, so Mudita, it was really a nice uh, talk actually. So what I just uh, want you to just tell our students, uh, you know that uh, most of our students, uh, especially those who come to science faculties, they think that uh, they are, the future will be just uh, not very clear. And then most of the students think that they have to just finally be teachers or something like that. And then only the students who are, just selected for doing special degrees. So they think uh, they just uh, have a future because uh, they have opportunities to go abroad and then do the things. And then most of the students, they just uh, finally just reside there in uh, foreign countries, USA, Australia, Japan, and things like that. So, um, uh, but uh, only very few of them like you and me. So we are the people returning to Sri Lanka and doing something to the country. So um, uh, for our students, especially uh, the, the students who are just now studying in the faculties and also uh, the students who are doing uh, A-levels. So they also have a big problem now, you know, that uh, they are thinking that uh, when they, are, they, they want to get a decision to come to uh, the university, most of the students, uh, even if they are qualified enough to enter to science faculties, they don't just uh, apply and they just, just don't register to science faculties thinking this problem because they, they all want to uh, probably not the students interest, probably their parents or teachers, they encourage them to become doctors, engineers. So they, those are the two jobs mainly Sri Lankan people are aware of. So for that kind of community, what kind of message Mujita, Mujita as, a, as, a, as the head of the John Keels, so what kind of message you can give, Mudita? So uh, one thing I think, uh, uh, let, let me say that uh, doctors or engineers will not exist without scientists. Because engineers actually convert uh, knowledge into usable forms. But the knowledge was found by a scientist. Doctors can probably find out what uh, ailment you have, but uh, to for you to uh, give some kind of medicine, it has to come through actually a chemist. Actually, chemist or biochemist has to be there. So uh, this is the part I think uh, Sri Lankan society. This is why I said we don't have a scientific society. We don't. The biggest problem right now is uh, the country convert trying to convert to organic fertilizer overnight it was done by a doctor. Right. This is. This is ridiculous situation. Uh, I have never seen this kind of. Uh, I'm. I don't think a person who uh, who is educated should be doing this kind of idiotic thing. But he ended up confusing the whole uh, uh, leaders of the country and ended up. Uh, now we might be facing um, food short shortages in the upcoming year. So. This is where the science scientists also have to start talking. Uh, this, is, this is why the new generation can do a lot of things because when we were students, we couldn't take our message to anybody unless we know somebody who's right to paper or something like that. Those days we got our, all our knowledge. Most of the time we read yesterday's news. Uh, most of the time we didn't know what was going on unless you are listening to a radio near a TV. And the number of TVs were not that high those days. And the number of uh, radios were, I don't know, people were not very uh, good at listening to radio. And then it's, it was most of the time it was music. But right now, if you want to know what's happening in the country, you can go to Twitter, Facebook, or even some news media, which is online. And uh, a lot of information in your hand. Um, I'm pretty sure you use your smartphone a lot. Um, even though uh, you might not um, have money. I think uh, I've heard now Mahapala is enough to pay for a phone bill. Uh, those days it wasn't. Uh, I think we barely survive on Mahapala. 
but uh, my my point is uh, we uh, should start applying what we learn uh, we shouldn't be just questioning uh, your knowledge for example did you ever think that the dhammika pani is going to work for um, covid 19 how did he know that uh, this virus uh, is going to you know uh, get, can be killed using whatever the concoction we he made within like i don't know with some dream or whatever so this is the kind of thing we need we need to be scientific we need to think scientific maybe i'm not putting sri lankan knowledge down if you really think there is western science and eastern science then you don't know any science there has to be only one science science is uh, a process which is leading to one answer whether you come through western side or eastern side you have to come to one uh, there can't be two truths uh, in science right i i think this is what we have to get across to the, the society as well as we need to get to the leaders and say you know connect everything it's not just one thing you can't just change one thing in the country and expect everything to be okay if you change one thing there is there'll be domino effect and end up changing a lot of other things so these are the things uh, everybody understand this but nobody speaks uh, i don't know if you follow me on social media i say whatever i have to say and sometimes people tell me not to say things but i don't really care uh, i think you guys have to start talking thank you aruni and Dananjani, I think. Um, but uh, you should start. I mean, don't be afraid, I think. This is the only thing I can say. Uh, if we start, if everybody start talking, there will be enough voices. I remember, I, I think this is what uh, finally um, changed when this, um, uh, the, organic fertilizer debacle happened in April. Not many people talk, but with uh, three, four months gone, I think last month, the month before, there were a lot of agriculture uh, people started talking and there's a lot of vo voice and noise in the country. Finally, the uh, government has to change uh, because not every, when, when nobody talks, there's only one opinion. If whether you write it right or wrong, there's one op opinion. Opinions matter. This is a democracy. We should talk. We should uh, uh, discuss things. It's not to put somebody down. It's just to, uh, I think we should uh, let ideas uh, to, you know, collide and finally find the right truth. Yeah, I strongly believe there is only one right path. I don't know whether I answered your question, Professor, but uh, that's yes, what I did. Yeah, yeah. And also one thing I noticed, there are a lot of uh, females in science faculties now. Uh, I think this problem happens at all level. If you look at, go and look at the data. Up to that point, uh, the population is 50-50. Uh, for A level, it becomes about 60, 40, and then for universities, it's like 66 to 34. Um, I'm, I think um, many parents buy three wheelers to people who are failing all level. And you have probably seen Mao PSN has on behind most of the three wheelers. I think we are killing our country's talent uh, just because they fail one exam or just because they fail once. Uh, or they want to uh, start earning money, that's probably not the best uh, career to follow because those are how long you're going to do this. Right? It, it won't build you a career. I think we have to start talking to people and say, you know, try other avenues. We have to, we need all these other people coming in. I'm not saying if they, if they can't pass exams, they should be in the university, but there has to be some solution. Something wrong with the O-level exam, I, I can't impact that. I think as university professors, uh, maybe all of you can. Uh, 
know if you have I, any yeah yeah please do ask questions i i wonder maybe i didn't say anything worthwhile even though you said man no so you can also use zoom's chat option if you have any questions or comments uh, this is the problem okay if you don't if you don't want to speak in english speak in single i i yes i okay. still understand single and uh, dr mudita uh, mudita good to see you here on this platform and uh, yes after a long time i guess uh, yeah seeing you uh, yes i am yes <laughs> and uh, yeah one thing i want to ask you is like uh, now we see a lot of like kills products like i mean are there any major uh, production facilities uh, somewhere you know um, so uh, one thing varuni kills is not a good uh, uh, company to think about production the only thing they produce is uh, Uh, food and beverages uh, they have this uh, keys food uh, products uh, in a color mm-hmm. and uh, they have ice cream and elephant house drinks uh, both in ranal and horana mm-hmm. those are the only manufacturing we have uh, keys is mainly a service providing industry we do stock broking it services uh, hotels um, Oh. supermarkets these are the main businesses property we don't manufacture uh, this is this is a problem i have tried to tell them uh, it's difficult to you know change chairman mm-hmm. and deputy chairman okay but i see that some processed meat and all like maybe yeah so that uh, that actually that actually is uh, one of the biggest uh, manufacturing things we have so uh, like i said um, The, the food products um ice cream and drinks i think uh, they are already aware of uh, the bad side of sugar they are aware of bad side of plastic so they are working on uh, solving those issues yes prash chandan <laughs> uh, dr mudita is very uh, uh, motivational uh, talking so can you just tell uh, our graduates uh, how to uh, just in brief how to start a business because there are uh, for the uh, spe- not for the special graduates are the, usually they go abroad for the higher studies now we are producing this applied science students applied science graduates uh, and uh, uh, three uh, uh, degree graduates also Yeah. so can you just tell in brief sure. how to start a business their own business okay um, they have knowledge and skills let's yeah. say so there is something called value proposition canvas and a business uh, i can't remember the second word but canvas this if you go search these two terms on youtube it will explain how to uh, how if you are producing something you need to know what what value you are creating for example in my talk there is something called jobs to be done so any product let's say if you want to buy a car uh oh, maybe that's too much let's say if you want to buy a pen uh you will think which pen what brand uh, whether it's a gel pen or just a ink pen what color um, you will probably based on so there are a lot of things you kind of when you are making even a simple thing like pen you go through few things in your head those are the jobs which does pen is for writing but writing is the on, not the only job a pen is going to do sometimes people buy a pen for st- as a status symbol they will buy a parker pen or whatever like a little bit of high end pen because that's also part of the job of a pen so jobs to be done so if you are creating a product that's one of the things you need to really figure out what is your value proposition canvas that's the first thing then you can use uh, business uh, canvas to actually figure out all the other details which is needed and come up with a proposal like uh, it doesn't have to be 10 pages if you can come up with a two page uh, proposal of uh, what you want to do how you are going to earn money uh, because if it is a business for example 
for business you don't need any any knowledge if you go to a corner store in your village the guy who has not even uh, gone beyond grade seven is a good mudalali in 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 every corner in the country because it's mostly common sense you need to figure it out but starting point i think that will help if you create those two canvases and small proposal then you can some there are especially for women these days a lot of um, um, funding available in banks i don't know whether they will give but at least you can go and try and if you don't try you will not know and there are other funding sources like adb and all of that comes and give uh, to different departments uh, if you read uh, government uh, uh, circulars and things like that uh, i think gasset mainly you can find those things sometimes those things are in newspapers you can apply for those and uh, yeah so starting point i think you need to know what you are offering and how you are going to make money okay thank you thank you first time dr mudita there are two messages in the chat as well so one yeah. is from professor manav devi Uh, yeah. she says uh, thank you so much madita everything you mentioned was very important and i guess your talk uh, motivated uh, our students to the correct direction and the next one is from uh, dr dena ranatunga i guess uh, thank you dr madita truly motivational and thought provoking thank you uh, 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 madita this is uh, melanie um so uh, it was a really great talk you kept us glued to our seats the whole time so i'm so glad you came to our platform i'm not sure here. about that <laughs> no no really <laughs> believe me so uh, i i have a um like a general question because i'm curious so yeah. you are a person who creates jobs for people right in sri lanka so i met i meet some i mean students um who are not very interested in going abroad to pursue higher studies mm -hmm. or going into academia so they okay. want to always to go, want their passion is to go to industry okay. so i would like to know when you hire a fresh graduate to to your um, like uh, institute um, what are the things you are looking for except for their academic uh, excellence okay this is a difficult question um i it's sometimes the way people answer the okay. uh, way people come and talk to me i can tell uh, this is the right fit i actually look for a good fit to my team because it took me a lot of time to build this team and it is working i don't want to break it so i look at that side a lot um so if uh, so if i'm saying uh, you want to be a team player maybe but sometimes you can tell from i mean maybe something which i've learned over the years is to read people when they are coming through the door uh that, that is not something i can i can tell what it is but uh, forget that side i think uh, mainly if you are really interested in doing science i give you a chance uh i've given chances to people and if if it is not working out i've told them to move on also those are difficult decisions sometimes i take them because uh, i give them a chance at least 6 months for them to like uh, make things happen if you can make things happen if you are sure that you can make things happen i have very high standards and if you can meet those yeah that's uh that's why i i told you the like, first question i ask is why you started doing science in after all level from that you can tell a lot of things ask that question when somebody comes to meet you you will start like some people say because of my brother was doing this i did uh some people say my father told me to do this my friends were doing this um uh, just because A lot of like i want a good job so none of them are interested in science right but if you if uh, somebody is truly interested in science you can tell i'm pretty sure you know this all of you know this 
Yes. All of uh, you were yeah. like that. I'm pretty sure that otherwise you wouldn't be there, no? <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, that is, uh, yeah, uh, very interesting uh, to know that from uh, uh, your side of uh, uh, the story when you hire. Like, Actually, I, I got a CV from a first class engineer, chemical engineer. And he has finished all four parts of SIMA and uh, he was starting a low degree. I didn't hire him. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, um, why, why why did you uh, ma made the decision at that time? So I asked him why you started doing science uh, oh, okay. after all level. He said because of his brother. Oh, okay. Then he, he decided to do law after that. Yeah, and the other question I ask is, why are you doing all these different things? What, what are you trying to do? You know, doing law, you're doing SIMA, you're doing engineering. What do you want to do? I don't think uh, he had figured out what really wanted he wanted to do. He was a good guy, but I didn't hire him. He was a very <laughs> nice guy. And I understand. Uh, thank you. That was a really good uh, answer. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Murida. Audience, if you have any other questions, uh, you can still drag them to Dr. Murida. Uh, seems like we have uh, taken all the questions and comments. Uh, thank you, audience, for your nice comments and questions. And thank you, Dr. Mudita, for your valuable uh, answers. And um, since we have taken all the questions and comments, uh, I think we can conclude. And please that. do. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn, as Melanie found out. Uh, you can add me. And if you have questions, you can actually write to me. Uh, when I have time, I reply. Uh, most of the time, people ask for jobs and which I can't do everybody a job. But uh, if you send me a CV, I usually I'd keep them at least for one year. Uh, so I have a folder for every year, uh, the CVs I'm getting. Um, so uh, thank you very much. I, um, Peradini, coming to Peradeniya Chemistry Department was one of the best decisions in my life. Um, I still remember Price Jandani teaching me thermodynamics, which I didn't understand half of it those days. I don't know whether I understand it now also, madam, but uh, it was a good uh, experience. I remember uh, those days we were told not to go to board. Uh, I think I have gone to the board uh, just because people told me not to go to the board then when faculty members asked. I actually started walking against the tide from the day one I joined Peradini, I think. So it was one of the best times of my life. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Matsa. Really interesting stories. Uh, but since we are running behind of time, uh, we'll conclude today's session. Thank and you. now I invite uh, Vinu Vijay Ratna to deliver the word of thanks. On behalf of the organizing committee of the INSPIRE webinar series, I'd like to thank our guest speaker, Dr. Mudita D. Senaratyapa for acceding to our request and gracing us with his presence today. Sir, we are very appreciative of the knowledge you shared with us. The world of science can seem daunting at times, but with the information you provided, I'm sure that the students would be able to better chalk out their future endeavors. And I'm sure that our participants realized how opportune pursuing a career in the sciences is. The amount of participants today is indicative of how productive this session has been. Let me take this opportunity to thank Professor Anura Vikramasinghe for hosting today's webinar. I also wish to express my gratitude to Professor Manavadevi Ganahenage, the head of the Department of Chemistry for her continual guidance. I'd like to thank everyone who took part in today's webinar. Thank you for your cooperation and I hope you found today's session informative. 
let me take this opportunity to thank our guest speaker once again. And before winding up, I'd like to invite all of you to our next webinar. This would be titled Liquid Metal Chemistry for the Synthesis of Functional Nanomaterials and Catalysis. It would be on 6th January at 5 p.m. And our guest speaker would be Dr. Tobin Dienecker. Thank you for your active participation and I wish you all a pleasant evening. I'd like to invite our guest speaker, Dr. Senarat Yapa, to join the Meet the Speaker event using the other Zoom link provided. Thank you. Thank you.